Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the African EV podcast. Uh, as usual, I'm your host, Karashiago. Today I am Olukokunles. I am Alora Les, but I am here. I have here Patrick Amwa and Bernard Achampo, all from Accra. Gentlemen, you are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Patrick, as a CEO of the company, uh, let's start with you. Tell us your story. How did you get into electric vehicles and renewable energy? So, um, I think it all started um, in, um, in June, no, not June, in 2011. Sorry. Yeah, 2011, when I graduated from uni. So, my Did final year. Can you hear me? Which uni was that? Sorry? Which school was that? At uh, University of Hertfordshire in UK. So, um, I had to um, build an electric vehicle that could travel 50 miles per hour and also could carry three people. And this was for my final year project. Um, I did that. I did really well. So we built a, I built it with my team of, um, of um, five students. Uh, we did the prototype and we had to run it. And uh, once that was done, we submitted and I passed the, the, uh, the assignment. After then, I moved into more, I got actually a job from um, different countries because I speak different languages. So, um, Which are, what languages speak, are those? I speak Italian, French, and Spanish. And learning Japanese because I do go to Japan a lot and other languages as well. So, um, I did actually, um, I, I came across a lot of companies that were quite interesting, but I didn't really look at it because maybe that wasn't my calling. So I moved into um, working for um, an American company, which their HQ is based in Connecticut. And I was mainly taking care of the automotive sector and also the marine uh, food and beverages, HV and other markets. I did that for like a few years and uh, I moved into working for an Italian company, which you know already. So I was part of Fiat group. So I was, I was in charge of uh, Iveco, PNH and Alfa Romeo um, Jeep, which is Chrysler. So I was in charge of a lot of projects for them. And I did that too for a couple of years and I quit. Uh, reason being is because uh, I think it wasn't, it wasn't for me, I wanted to do something different. So then I, uh, I got a phone call from a Japanese company, which they had to be, uh, what, what, what company? A Japanese company, so it's called Fukushima. So, Fukushima. Uh, Victoria, yeah. So um, this Japanese company uh, actually is uh, is one of the key key players in the market for electric uh, car charging and stuff. So um, they called me because they um, looking at my CV. I've worked in different automotive industry. I've done a lot for, for different companies, and also um, I grew some of the businesses. So I'm moving to the um, to the company, and, uh, and I had to actually develop the EV business for them. So I came in, their EV business was just starting. So they just um, had um, uh, a call from uh, a Nissan to build uh, the charging infrastructure for them. So, so, so are, that, 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 that has a, a barrier on the Nissan Leaf? Yes. So if you check, um, the Nissan Leaf has the product that I was supplying to. Okay. So, so this if, company supplying Nissan Leaf charges? The yes, EVS so, for Nissan Leaf? Yeah, the, the charging cable which is the fast DC. And also, you know the socket inside the Nissan? Um, mm -hmm. We were the one that we supplied it. So they were quite, um, well, there's also Mitsubishi, Subaru, and other other uh, cars. Those are all Chadimo yes. charges, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, um, so when I came to the business, I started growing the business. Within a short period, within uh, less than a year, I grew the business to millions. Because I knew I, I was familiar with the automotive market, I knew a lot of companies. So my goal was just to push it. And uh, so hence why I got to know all the automotive companies, like most of them. I knew them. So I was having meetings with most of them building the business. And, uh, okay, so it, it was quite a, kind of fun 
we did that and was fun and then i i thought okay if i could grow the business for another company i think i can build my own company and, and do something so that's when i built the uh, crane and then i start supplying to, um, some of my old customers and um also I start building a new product for the market and then um i thought about integrating um Activating the solar panel, which my use is the solar panel. So, um, yeah, I thought about integrating um, electric vehicle to solar couple, which is renewable energy. So that's why I was thinking, ah, interesting. In, in my country, they might need this kind of um, solutions. And because I've been building these solutions for different companies here and supplying, I might as well take it to my country. So I decided that, I, yeah, I decided that I will, I will bring it to Ghana. But before then, I was supplying to South Africa. I've been working with a company in Egypt. Um, I've been supplying to Israel, um, to um, Kenya. So I've been, I've been kind of pushing into the African market. But I, I'm, uh, I've done more in South Africa than any other African country. Wow, that's a lot to unpack. But let's, let, 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 let's, let's take it one by one. So from uh, your narration, the whole EV thing started mainly with the, the Japanese uh, charging company. Yes, that, that was which year? That was which year? Right, yes. So it was requested by uh, Nissan and also other Japanese company. Um, Japanese company they work uh, they work together. So they are cable manufacturers and they are one of the big cable manufacturers in the world. That's and you can even include Sumitomo. And I think when I, I had the meeting, I Sumitomo. Yeah, Sumitomo, they are kind of my friends now. Um, I had a meeting with Kantanka and they mentioned a few people from Sumitomo. So I said, oh, I knew these guys. And also Sumitomo one time took an idea for me and they make him money. So it was my idea that I came up with when I was working with the Japanese company. And then one of my customers told them and they actually took it on board and they started making money because it was a good idea. Okay, so, so uh, which year did you join a Japanese company? Uh, in 2016. That was four years ago. Yeah. All right. So from 2016 to 2020 now, what changes will you say you have observed when it comes to electric vehicle charging uh, infrastructure in terms of the markets? What are the dynamics? I, I could say, I mean, it's changed a lot um, in terms of um, obviously more people are getting into the EV and people that were not aware about EV now, they know and understand how it works. So for me, my, uh, my goal was to, to do something different. And uh, because I did that for my final year project, once I understood that that was what I meant to do, I decided to do my own thing. But for other people, it's been good because they save money on fuel. Um, also, there's less maintenance for them. So I could say EV has, has made a big change in a lot of people's life, okay. especially for me. So, 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 so in Japan, I know that a lot of Japanese manufacturers are not so keen on EVs, like Toyota, they're not so keen on EVs. They're going to hybrids and all that. When you look at Japan, you look at Europe, and you look at Africa, how will you rate this continent in terms of uh, EV awareness? So, is it uh, two continents and one country? I would say, uh, well, most of Japanese are aware about, um, about um, the, the technology going on because, um, like I said, Japanese, they work together and also they co collaborate in terms of uh, with their manufacturers, they, they tend to help each other. In terms of uh, Europe, I must say, Europe, they, they're picking up really fast. And also, um, if you talk about Scandinavia, I think Scandinavia, China, those guys, they are up and running. Scandinavia, I think in Europe, they are, they are um, the number one in terms of EV. Yeah. So I went to Scandinavia actually um, last year and uh, we had the EV summit there. So most of the companies came there. Um, I think they pushing the market really good. 
And uh, now you have UK is 2025 and you have other countries that are picking up as well. So I must say, in terms of um, pushing the EV, the, uh, the government is pushing a lot of money compared to our government, which they are actually doing opposite. They're taking the money. What do you mean by our government? I mean, let's be pragmatic. We have what a do government. You mean by our government? I just want I just want to clarify that because yeah, I, we I, never I, say the nationality. We don't know your nationality, so so I must say, like let's say for instance the Ghanaian uh, government. Who are they Ghanaian? No, no, no. Like I start supplying to African other African countries. So the thing is, being a Ghanaian sometimes helps me that we're trying to bring something different, unique to the country, and you have some ignorant people. I will explain why I say ignorant people trying to um, kill your ideas. So when I was cleaning one of my cars, I went to um, the Ghana duty, whatever they call it. I sat down with one, of, yeah, I sat down with one of the officers and I said, okay, I'm trying to clear this car. There's potential that I could bring hundreds because I know why, because I'm working with other companies to do that. And I have collaboration with other companies to push it. But he said to me, forget your ideas. We just discovered the oil in the country. So uh, I don't think we really want to, uh, lose this money so when he said that i immediately i felt like slapping him but you know what i said no this this strong ways. yeah i felt like slapping him but i feel like also he's a useless man because the the biggest issue we have in our country which is ghana i'll be honest with you i know people are going to watch this but i'll be honest is the fact that we have useless government and i'll be honest with you people are starving they they they're taking the money but what are they doing to support the country we one, we are trying to reduce pollution, right? We're trying to bring jobs. So there's a lot of unemployment. This will upset me most when I talk about this to um, even other, other, other companies. So there's a lot of unemployment. What we're trying to do is trying to bring more jobs. I actually have a lot of partnership with European, uh, European companies, African companies, and also uh, an American company to try and bring more EV, reduce the pollution. But guess what? They wouldn't accept it because uh not they wouldn't accept it but why would they increase something that doesn't consume anything so the duty is, is killing everyone I, I mean we shipped about a few cars just a few months ago for ev for uh, some customers they are happy to pay but not everyone can afford i i had a partnership with another manufacturer which we can ship cheap ev but very good quality but guess what the duty is too much so we have to pause so there's a lot happening in our country. We don't get the support. Here, I, ha I had a meeting with um, um, the, um, one of the uh, pro uh, government projects uh, last couple of weeks, and they are pushing a lot of money. So basically, I need to build a technology that could do some something. I can't explain everything. And guess what? They're pushing the money. Project is ready, and there's a deadline. So people are, re people are really ready to push it. Whereas our country, we're trying to push our money do the business. Yes, we don't get the support. I hope you do understand my point and my frustration. So if we can have the government back in us up, to the choir. You know that. You know you're preaching to the choir, right? <laughs> so if 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 uh, if our government can support we we can uh, we as a company, not just Akron, but other companies, um, to push EV into the market, also renewable energy. Obviously, we're trying to save um, human life because there's too much pollution there. Also, we bring in a lot of jobs because guess what? If we succeed and we employ a lot of people, there's more jobs for everyone. And there will be, the country will be moving smoothly, but actually it's not happening. Because I've had a meeting with a lot of um, Ghanaians and uh, officials and it didn't go well because I end up getting upset uh, for what they say. Give me a for so example. They, Don't mention any names, but for the sake of uh, your peace of mind. But give me yeah, an example. I mean, to be you know, you know, because, because we also seen a lot of things uh, in our EV advocacy work here in the country. So I just just curious. Yeah, because we, we well, they have connection to a lot of places. So remember when uh, Nissan had a meeting with the government, right? Remember Nissan had a meeting with the government. How about their plans? Is that it? So immediately I contacted the HQ because I, I know the guys from the HQ in Japan and also the um the head um officials in South Africa and other countries. We had a, we had a good uh, conference call for a few couple of days. They like my ideas about what I'm trying to do in Ghana, spe specifically in Africa. Well, Africa is, is big, but let's say from Ghana, what I'm trying to do. So they like the idea, but the thing is, for you to do this, you need big money. When I say big, you need big money. Because you cannot do it yourself. Unless, unless the government is, is, uh, is, 
is helping to push it. So here's my thing. If the government is willing to push and help uh, we as a company, trust me, there, there'll be a lot of jobs out there. Uh, there will be are you of, talking uh, about, are you talking about importing EVs or the EVSE or setting up assembly plants or setting up manufacturing plant? What, what are you talking about? Because uh, oh. Yeah. The, the, the conversation, ultimately, we all want uh, the country to go electric. Okay. But in the case of Ukraine, what were you trying to do specifically that you encountered these problems? Were you trying to import or you were trying to set up uh, an EVSE? I mean, what, what are you trying to do? So the main goal, the ultimate goal was to bring an electric, electric vehicle. That's the first step. Because yeah. you need to start pushing for all the manufacturing companies to, to be able to start producing uh, EV over there. Because they need more experienced people. And um, so I was trying to bring more EVs to people to buy it, use it, reduce the pollution. So and then you how, have... What, do you need for the, what help were you looking for from the government? Well... I support reduce the duty because it's, it's ridiculous for you to pay. Here's the, hear me out. Here's the thing. So if let's say you buy, uh, you bring a used EV and um, let's say a new EV costs you 40K USD and a used one, let's say yeah, that's, you, that's, that's, that's a Tesla. That's a 40K. Oh, you have Nissan that's about 35K, depends which model. So, they talk about brand new. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we talk about brand new. You bring in, let's say, you bring it, you're bringing a used one, for instance, for a customer that wants to um, obviously drive EV. You bring a used one, the duty even kills it because the fact that you're paying 20% or whatever of the of the um, the, um, the manufacturing the manufacturing price kills the market. The cost because, price. Yes. No, so, in, in Ghana, in Ghana, I can, I can give you the duty breakdown if that's what you're looking for. You no, pay, no, no. <laughs> you pay mm -hmm. the, the, if you're importing goods. Yeah. In terms of the import duty, there is yeah. a range. You can pay zero percent. That's your, your goods are zero rated, like yeah. agricultural equipment. Then you can either pay five percent, ten percent, fifteen percent, or twenty percent, depending on the type of goods. Now, yes. for cars, the duty is twenty percent of the CIF cost. The cost insurance and freight. So you pay 20% of that. And how they determine the cost is that normally they will use the Kelly Blue, Blue Book value. And if it's a used car, the, you factor the depreciation. All right, all right. So maybe you have bought the car for $1,000. But according to the Kelly Blue Book, at a, a new, at a new, that car is going for 20000 and is the car is five years old, so after depreciation and everything, the cost should be ten thousand. So they will use that ten thousand, add insurance, and freight from your destination, sorry, from your origination port to your destination port to it. Let's say that the, the freight and insurance is thousand five hundred. So they calculate twenty percent of eleven thousand five hundred. I hope you get what I'm saying. When you, the person who have bought the car, bought the car for three thousand dollars, so obviously most people don't understand why you have to pay twenty percent of eleven thousand five hundred. When you could have paid twenty percent of three thousand, because that's what you pay. Yeah. Okay. That is one. Yeah. Then, of course, you have to pay on top of the duties. You now have to pay other things like uh, they have all manner of charges. You have the, the VAT charge, VAT 15%, so 17.5%, and then, uh, sorry, 15%, and then you have NHIS, which is 2.5. All right, so everything is 17.5. But the 17.5% is on the duty that you have already calculated for you, plus the CIF cost. All right, so in terms of actual percentages, you are paying duty 20% and then VAT plus uh, National Health Insurance levy 
21 21.5% or so. All right? So that makes it 41.5% taxes. Then you add other expenses like the port expense, the credit expense. When you add all those things, average you should be spending 46.5%. I hope you answer. Duty. So if the car is 10,000, just add 46.5% to the 10,000. That's how much you're supposed to pay. Then our, our, I'm just trying to uh, give you a testing contest because I know this is uh, something that uh, annoys a lot of people, including myself. Uh, according to our licensing regime, if the older the car is, you have to pay some surcharges. I hope you get what I'm saying. So if the car is uh, more than 10 years old, you pay a certain penalty. On top of these taxes, if it's uh, more, the older it is, the more surcharges you pay. I, I yeah. hope you're, you're, you're with me. Uh, so all those things will affect the final duty that you will pay. And because the area the duties are so high, now the government is saying that they will take off 30% of the final figure. But still, it is high. Number one. And number two, now the government has given a lot of tax breaks to some of these German and uh, Japanese companies to set up SKD assembly plant here. Do you get it? So they are not incentivized to encourage people to bring electric cars that will come in and undercut this uh, new plant. But obviously, at the time, the plants were not uh, ready. Yeah. But at the time, you were you were going through your challenges. The plants were not ready. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that, that's a, a little background to put everything in context for you. So, like I said, to me, we we kind of need support if not, uh, if it's not physical money or it can be reducing the duty because uh, initially, when I was bringing the cars, I thought, okay, maybe it might not be much because it's electric and it's measured in kilowatt. Same as solar panels and stuff, it's measured in kilowatt. And it's not measured as um, as uh, like internal combustion engines, so it should be less. Because of but have, have you heard that our people can, don't know how to even measure the capacity of the electric cars? Have you heard that? Yeah, yeah, they put two liter on, on the document and stuff. But like I said, I, I, I was actually, when the car arrived, there was a delay and everything. So I just paid the money and uh, I got them to tow um, all, all the cars. And then I, I just left that day because I was flying that day. So it was too much stress. That's what I'm saying. The thing is, whatever you're doing over there, sometimes there's too much stress because people are not making life easy for you. For us and and the system is well it's not about corruption but the system is bad it's, they don't they don't want to introduce simple system that will make our life easier for us bringing business into the country um you know when they say um um like when the government was saying people are brought to return and blah blah all this this kind of, of return. Is that the way return? Yeah, yeah all this stuff that they say sometimes it doesn't know you know i know a lot of um, entrepreneurs that are actually in europe Make big money, so yeah. but they don't want to come there due to all these reasons. You know, it's either you take a risk and you go waste your money, or you just take a risk and see how it goes. I you waste your money. money. Well, trust me, I, I know what is going on. Not everything I can explain on this platform, but there's been there's been few things that's happened, not to me, but to people that I know. So, um, yeah. But uh, coming back to what we were saying is, we we want to keep pushing the EV business in Ghana and. Like I said, we'll do whatever it takes to push the EV business, especially um, by importing uh, electric vehicles and also the charging solution. I actually sold um, uh, one of my charging cables to another customer just uh, in June, well, just last month. Um, he, I helped him bring the car also, and also I gave what, what, him what, 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 what model was that? What car was that? Uh, it's a BM. So uh, it's a BM hybrid, but he needed a Type 2 um, electric um, charger. Okay. So I know also there's a, a Nissan um, Leaf uh, 2015. So there's been a lot um, customers I've been dealing with recently, and it's been going well. They love the car. Everyone loves the car, but it's the fact that they they all whine about the duty. 
that's the thing. They're all crying about the DT. They end up spending so much. So, so, so are, are you implying that uh, the DT on an electric car is more is more than on a normal petrol or diesel car equivalent? Absolutely. I mean, think about it. I mean, if the DT wasn't much, God, I probably had about. I, I, I think you, you have to explain this. You have to explain this. Do, 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 do you have some document you can show us? Uh, some figures. I said, okay, uh, this car, this car, this very car, this is how much it was, and this is how much okay. it I'll give you an example. The BMW, the import was about, uh, the duty was about 8,000 something. I don't have the document. My Nissan Leaf, they was You can email it to me later. I'll put it on the, on the, on the, on your screen, uh, on the screen. You can use the Ghana Customs app to verify how much you say you are supposed to pay. And no, put even the side by side. You know their yeah. website. It works. The app works. The app works. Let we me see. Cars. We just fled some cars and it was um, it wasn't working. So, but oh, we, it works. We have a, okay. unless you're using yeah. the wrong one, because uh, we have about a few cars going uh, should be cleared by this week. No, uh, this week coming here. Uh, what, 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 what what cars? Uh, it's a van, and then uh, that's more electric vehicles because we need it for some stuff. A van. Um, um, oh, okay, okay. They say that uh, 404 error. I can see that. Yeah, so it hasn't been working. Um, but yeah, we, but it was working since. I mean, I used it the whole of last month and all that. So. Yeah, yeah. But since we start pushing some cars out, it hasn't been, and also with the new law about you know the savage class and stuff. So we're trying to clear as many cars as we can for people and stuff. All that loss, you see. That's what I'm saying. That people don't get the African uh, what's happening in our continent. You see, the, the, the manufacturers. The argument is that you want to support the local 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 assembly. So you are trying to prevent people from bringing overused cars. All right. After the Tesla battery investor day, what's going to happen is that people are going to realize that electric vehicles very soon are going to be the same price. They're going to be price parity with petrol and diesel cars. And in certain instances, they will begin to even become cheaper. So people are going to be in a hurry to dump their used cars. So if I have to import a Toyota something and pay this huge duty, when I can buy brand new locally, eh, and the manufacturer will even give me, will, will, will sort of guarantee the loan from the bank. So the bank will give me a, at a very good interest rate and I will spread the payment over a year or two. Why pay, let's say, $10,000 for a used car when I can pay $13,000 for a brand new one and spread the payment over a year or two? Wait for the used one, I have to fuck everything up front. It's a no-brainer. Uh, who said they, they're going to make EV? I'm not saying they are going to make EVs. They are coming to produce the petrol and diesel cars. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. So, 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 what is happening is that if you if if, if you don't take care, it will become the dumping ground for new cars that are using obsolete technology. Yeah, yeah. And it's not just a problem in Ghana. I mean, there are a number of African countries that have uh, parties because. Yeah, so, like I said, I mean, help us bring more cars and like. We can bring clean cars, new cars. People want the cars. I know a lot of taxi drivers that have been requesting. I mean, when I say a lot, a lot. But the thing is, the duty, when I say the duty, it just kills them because the duty can buy a car. Like how much in city terms are you talking about? I mean, my duty, I paid about close to everything close to 34000 How much? 300, 300. How much? 340 million. Everything was about 34,000. 34,000 uh, Ghana cities. So, okay, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. But w w which car was this? Is it a Nissan? Nissan? Yeah, but my, my plan was to bring more Nissan Leaf, but now I don't even know because uh, I'm, un unless a customer says they want it, and I, I send everything. $5,600, give or take. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's one to this. One dollar is six cities. So, oh, depends on the rate. Unless it's a yeah, yeah. Shall I? 
to be on the safe side. That's it. So, yeah, so like I said, initially I was thinking the duty would be, it wouldn't be much, maybe 10,000 or something, because it's electric car, come on. We, it's not, it's not like it's a, it's a petrol or diesel 6 the, 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 the funny thing is that our, our, our duty system for cars assumes that the more polluting the car is, the more you, you ought to pay. So if they punish you if your car is older, which is presumed to be more polluting. But when it comes to electric cars, I don't, I don't understand why they don't, you cannot, you cannot just extend that logic in the opposite direction. But the less it produces, then the, the, the less you have to pay in terms of duty. Yeah. I, I think that is because of entrenched interest. The yeah, petroleum I mean, guys, the, the... That's what they said to me. So, I mean, that's why, I mean, it's good for my own experience because like I said, I, I, I enjoy exploring. So it's good for me to understand people's mindset and I just have to keep pushing up, pushing. I mean, God forbid, if electric car doesn't work in, in Ghana, it will work in another country. So I'll still keep supporting other countries. Okay, so in Africa, in Africa, or, or where, 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 you did mention that you did a lot of business in South Africa. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm supplying to, uh, I would say one of the big, um, um, EV companies and uh, in South Africa and also um, in Egypt, I'm trying. Uh, we well, we have a partnership with the, the company, but also we're trying to do something. Um, we're trying to do something for Ghana, but we had to pause because I wanted to first investigate the market. Also, um, Israel people are buying the, the charging cables as well. Um, so Ghana, Egypt, South Africa. In Kenya, um, there's a customer there who is currently buying the cars or the equipment. Which one is it? Not equipment, because I mean, other other countries that don't do cars, just in Ghana. But yeah, they they buying the, the charging solution because we provide different ones. I showed you the website. We so, have so, so 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 uh, what type of charges uh, type are you talking about? For those of you listening from Africa, uh, the electric chargers are a bit like phone chargers. They are various type of connectors. We have the type two, we have CCS, we have Chademo. So I want to know from Patrick, uh, African EV organization, our position is that uh, as a country, and even as a continent, if possible, we must go CCS because it gives us a maximum uh, visibility. The chargers we are selling on the continent what type are they? Are they Chademo, CCS, Type 2? Um, so, it starts from the charging holders, the plug holders you saw from the exhibition, um, to the EVSE, uh, also to the socket that actually goes in the car or they use it for testing, and also to the charging stations. So, we have portable chargers. Uh, you have the, um, the charging stations, which are, which are also portable. So, it depends. But I mean, so far it's been the uh, cable holders, the EVS cable, the portable ones I, I showed you at the exhibition, um, a charging station by a small, small one, like the 60 kilowatts, and also- uh, oh, um, home charging. No, no, it's actually it's DC, it's not just home charging. It's DC. It's, so it can be for maybe uh, for destination charges and stuff like that. Hey, hey, what, what we've made, we call it portable DC as well. So you can carry with you, but it charges within 45 minutes. Full, okay. Fully charged. You just have to plug it anywhere that you have a three phase, three phase in the um, plugs. So we're trying to um, listen to the market. Uh, sorry, we try to listen to our customers and um, we we developing charges that will, will will help them and also make their life easy, especially for the ladies. So what are your three phase charges are, are they looking for? In the market? Well, my customers they're looking for at the moment. Uh, we just had a partnership with an American company. So we're doing like a portable um, charger, which has batteries inside. So with this, you can carry with you. It's like um, an emergency. Um, a gallon of petrol, basically. Yeah. yeah, so you carry with you one, whatever you are, you can just charge your, your car. So people don't need to worry. So we're trying to find different solutions that will benefit people and also make it cost effective. Because How is the African mean, market different from, let's say, the European market when it comes to the charging? Oh, there's, there's a huge difference at the moment. I mean, um, so far in Ghana, I would say I would just I've just supplied the portable 
EVSE. Um, but our main goal, we just had a partnership with another company in Ghana as well, which is good, an oil company. So it's to build um, different um, charging stations in Ghana. You mean an oil marketing company? It's an oil, uh, yeah, marketing, oil, uh, or whatever it is. It, no, 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 no. We, 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 have, we have, is it because in, in Ghana, when you say oil company, you can mean an explorer, you can mean a production company, you can mean a bulk distributor, you can mean uh, an oil marketing company. The oil marketing companies are the shells and the totals, people like that, who actually sell, they have a filling station that they sell to consumers. You get it? So yes. what you say, are you ready one of those people? Um, the company we signed the agreement with, they, they work with those, those guys. They work okay. with them. So um, their main objective is mainly to, uh, to do some further investigations and see where we can install them. And um, yeah, keep pushing. Um, so there's about, there's quite a lot of places that we're planning to store the charging station. So now I'm just preparing um, the, the uh, we are in the first phase. So we, I'm preparing the product that we, we need to install there. Uh, also do um, the cost as well and see how much it's gonna cost us to do all this stuff. Okay, wow. And, and in, in Europe, Europe uh, Europe is just growing. I mean, I'm just. It has been collecting the money. I, 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 I have my friend. I'm looking at my friend here. He likes collecting money. <laughs> I, I, I think you should come and <laughs> talk business with him. He can collect the money for you here in Ghana. I, I was looking right at him. Well, we will see how it goes. But I mean, the, the company they they they've been they've been quite keen since we met at the exhibition, and they've been pushing so. I've been delaying a bit because uh, it's been extremely busy here, I must say. So, but they are aware about the reason why I've delayed a little bit, and uh, I'll send them the information. It's just um, it's been extremely busy here. Okay. So, so, so uh, let us see. Yes, I think uh, for an introductory uh, session, we have basically covered a lot of uh, grounds. So definitely pick these topics one by one as time goes and have separate topical discussions along those lines. But I want to raise the Sustainable Energy and Transport Summit uh, that we are organizing. That was canceled for the year because of, so postponed, because of COVID-19. <laughs> uh, so just be aware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember you said that uh, you will make some cars available for test rides and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, in Africa, it's going it's going to take time. I mean, speak. speak I, 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 I disagree. I, I, I agree with uh, uh, Professor Will Will saying that Africa may lag behind in a, a year or two, but Africa is going to really, really pop. The simple reason is uh, affordability. You know, when, when, when the the policy statement that people are making. Uh, the position we are seeing now, when it gets to the point that to buy the car itself, the price is cheaper. Okay, maybe if you are buying the equivalent petrol car, you are paying ten thousand dollars. If you are buying the electric one, you are paying eight thousand dollars. Then, even if you have to pay uh, a bit more for the duty, you can balance at that end. Then, when you look at the cost savings when it comes to uh, fueling the car and maintaining the car. And then, of course, the convenience. You cannot stop the sound from rising. <laughs> Trust me, you are in a good uh, place. I was very excited that we met uh, last year. So for those, those, those who are listening, he can make a reference to when we met this the exhibition. There was a, <laughs> I think you are looking at the picture now. Uh, there was a, a fair. There's an annual fair organized by the Energy Commission, that's the energy regulator in Ghana, for renewable energy. And last year, one of their pushes was to find a use for the excess capacity that Ghana has for generating electricity. So they are pushing for EVs. 
a crane was there. They took a stand. And that is how Patrick and I met. And we have been this since. Uh, like I was saying, he, they are one of the uh, people who have decided to make available electric cars for the C summit so that people can have test drives and see for themselves and experience it. I, I can assure you that most of you, after taking the test drive, you'll be chasing you for uh, these cars. I wonder if you could tell us how many cars you can provide so that as you are coming, you can prepare yourself well. Okay, I um, there will be some Nissan BMs, um, Toyota, uh, yeah, there will be different cars. I mean, for instance, if the D2 was really cheap, there will be a Tesla, but I'm not even... No, no, Tesla, we have a problem of bringing a Tesla. The last time, uh, I think we were talking on YouTube or something, uh, one of the social media. Yeah, so I saw you guys on YouTube, I was actually, um, I was, um, I think I was doing something and I came across because we're trying to um, also post videos on YouTube about the products. And we do get a, a lot of inquiries from there as well. So we're trying to post everywhere. And uh, I came across and I, actually, I, I saw you in, 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 uh, in another Nissan Leaf. And I was thinking, oh, that's the dude I spoke to. You. And uh, I was like, oh, actually, let, let me just type something. Thank you very much, Mr. Amwa, Patrick, for uh, coming. Pleasure. And... Uh, Tell me about your frustrations. You know, you know, I, 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 will, I will be remiss if I don't say that one of the reasons why uh, <laughs> we brought you is so that I can hear you complain. You <laughs> because, <want> <laughs> because you see, sometimes you need the fellowship of the sufferings. <laughs> when, when, it, it, I, I, I seem weird sometimes or some of my colleagues when we are talking about these are the issues, the challenges, and the people don't seem to get it. And it seems that you are rather the madman or the one who refused to understand issues. So it is always encouraging to meet like-minded people who have gone through similar challenges. I'm a blessed day.